Today we're going to learn how to draw Lewis structures for covalent molecules. I'm not sure what you guys woke up to this weekend, but I woke up to a lot of snow on my street. I saw this when I was walking my dog this morning. Uh, Lewis structures. We've done Lewis structures uh, previously. Now, G.N. Lewis is actually a chemistry professor, and he conceived the idea when he was lecturing general chemistry students back in 1902. Bonding, so what's different today is we're going to draw bonds. Bonds involve just the sharing of electrons and atoms because we're going to be doing what we call covalent bonds between two different nonmetals. So recall that we've drawn Lewis structures for atoms. We did this first semester. For example, if we were to draw the Lewis structure for bromine, it would look something like this. Now, when you look at this, bromine actually, the symbol just bromine represents two things it represents a nucleus and it represents the core electrons. The dots are the ones we're concerned about. If you recall, bromine's valence electrons, it's actually 4s2, uh, 4p5. So if you add that 5 and the 7 together, you have 2, you get 7, which is 7 valence electrons. And those are important because those are the ones that are involved in bonding. So all we're going to do now is we're going to add different atoms together. For example, so now we'll draw a Lewis structure for an entire molecule. For example, if we look at water, it's going to look something like this. The, the line will represent a shared pair of electrons, what we call bonding pairs. We'll abbreviate that BP. And the dots will represent lone pairs, which are, we'll abbreviate LP. So some rules. First, there's, uh, the only atom that will follow this rule will be hydrogen. It's called the duet rule. Uh, hydrogen forms stable molecules when it shares two electrons. Most things need eight, but hydrogen's happy with two. Now that's simply because hydrogen has simply that one s orbital to fill, and it's really the only atom that does, does that. It wants to be basically, basically become like helium. Most every other atom we're going to talk about will follow what we call the octet rule. Carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine will always follow the octet rule with no exception. They have 2p and 2s orbitals that are filled to have stable configurations. Now, there's some other ones that don't follow the octet rule. We'll, we'll be more concerned with those later. Okay, so, for example, electrons we set occur in pairs. Now, the reason they do that is because, remember when we did electron configurations, each little square represented an orbital. If you recall, two electrons went into each orbital. And so, electrons occur in pairs because two go into orbitals. So we're going to put electrons into two categories, and one is bonding pairs. Bonding pairs are shared electrons. Shared means they're between two different atoms. We're going to represent bonded pairs with a line. So, so what we'll see is on one side we'll have like a symbol for an element, such as carbon. On the other side we'll have another symbol for another element, such as carbon there. So it'll look like carbon, line, carbon, like that. Now, the other type of electrons will, have, will, will be what we call lone pairs. Lone pairs are electrons that are on an atom, but they're not shared or between atoms. For example, if you did a bond between hydrogen and bromine, there would be a shared pair, but there would actually be three lone pairs that would be around the bromine. Because each electron likes to have eight unless it's hydrogen, and notice the way I've drawn this, bromine now has two, four, six, eight, and hydrogen has two, so each electron is, is happy. Bromine has followed the octet rule, hydrogen has followed what we call the duet rule. And so the lone pairs you see, we've represented those with two dots. So the central atom, I'll go through this quickly, is typically the least electronegative. So sometimes when you're drawing an atom, you're saying, what should I put in the center? It's going to be typically the least electronegative negative atom, the atom with the smallest number of valence electrons, the oddball element, and it can never be hydrogen, because hydrogen just forms one bond, so you won't put that in the center. So what we're going to do is follow something what we call the Nasbu method. This gives us an idea of the number of bonded and lone pairs, which makes the drawings much easier. Now first, let's go through what each letter means. So Nasbu is an acronym. N stands for needed. Now how many atoms does something need? Like we said, most everything needs eight, but hydrogen needs two. So just keep that in mind. Now how many do they actually have available? For that, we just have to count the valence electrons. And so remember, the core electrons are not included, so we just need to count the valence electrons. Now, sometimes we're going to be doing, doing drawings for ions, for polyatomic ions specifically. If it's a negative ion, you need to add that number of electrons. For example, if it's negative 3, like in phosphate, you'd add 3 electrons. But sometimes we'll do positive ions. There's not a lot of those. For example, ammonium is plus 1. And so if you have a, a polyatomic ion that's plus one, you'd actually take away one from the ava available number of electrons. So we got Na, so next we have S. S stands for shared. The number of electrons that are shared are between atoms. This will tell us if we have single, double, or 
triple bonds. These are multiple bonds. Now the way you do this is we take the N that we just calculated, subtract the A, and it will give us a number of shared electrons. Now the other thing is, like, well, how many bonds are there? Well, since electrons occur in pairs, all you have to do is take the number of shared electrons, which you just calculated, and divide it by two, and that gives us a number of bonds. And then, so this, the bonds would, would be what we call the bonding pairs. So that's our bonding pairs. Now the unshared electrons would be the number of lone pairs. Now how do we get that? So we take the number of available, which you found, minus shared, and that would give us the number of unshared. So let's use this method and draw a couple of atoms, and then you'll be doing this during, uh, during lab. So let's draw the water molecule. So what I'm going to do is just write first NASU and then the B. N for needed, A for available, S for shared, B for uh, bonds, and U for unshared. So let's go through each one. So let's draw the water molecule. Let's start with N. Now, I already wrote down 12, but let me tell you where that came from. 12 is a number that you need. Now, if you look at hydrogen, hydrogen only needs two, but there's two hydrogens, so that would be four. But we know oxygen is not hydrogen, so it needs eight. So four plus eight gives us a number 12. So remember, hydrogen needs two. Two times two is four. Oxygen is not hydrogen. It needs eight. And so you add those together, and you get 12. And next, we have available. Now, how many do they actually have available? We know hydrogen just has one valence electron because it's S1. Oxygen, on the other hand, if you just look at your periodic table, count across. Oxygen is 2S2, 2P4. So you count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So oxygen has 6. So basically, 6 plus 2 gives us 8 available electrons. So that's how many available we have in, in, in uh, the water molecule. Now, if we want to find the number that are shared, basically we'd say needed minus available. So we go 12 minus 8 needed minus available gives us our 4 shared electrons. Now, what we want to do is find out how many bonds there are. So we'll say 4 divided by 2, and that gives us 2 bonds. So the next thing you do is, well, how many are unshared? Remember, available minus shared, A minus S, gives you the number of unshared. And so that would give us 4. Now, how do you draw this? Well, basically, we know that we have uh, uh, 4. You have 2 bonding pairs and 2, two lone pairs. So what I'll do is you, I'll give you a chart or, or a table when we start the lab, and you'll have to f go down and look and see what shape that gives you. But when you do this, the, the atom that will go in the center will be oxygen because hydrogen never goes in the center. Then you'll basically attach two hydrogens to it. And so that will be your two lone pairs or your shared. So we have two bonds there. Then we have four unshared. And so there we go, two, four, two, four, like that. So now oxygen has eight, two, four. 4, 6, 2 here, 4 here, 6 here, then 8, then each hydrogen has 2. So now everything, oxygen has 8, each hydrogen has a duet. So the drawing, if you drew it uh, nicely, it would look like this. Now how we get shapes, you'll just look on your sheet, and you should see that it has two bonding pairs, two lone pairs, and under that you should find the shape bent and also the angle 101.95, and I should have a degree sign on that, so that would be degrees. Let's draw one more molecule for practice. Let's draw the molecule pH 3. So set up your, let's first do N. So N would be, remember, uh, nit phosphorus needs 8, hydrogen needs 2, but there's 3 hydrogens. So basically it's going to be 8 plus 6. So need it would be 14. How many are available? So for phosphorus, just count right across the periodic table. If you go, it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So you have 5 available from phosphorus, 1 available from each hydrogen, but you multiply that times 3. So basically 5 plus 3 would be 8 available electrons. Now to see how many are shared, you'd say 14 minus 8, and that would give you 6. We would divide that by 2 and get 3 bonds. Now we want to find the number of unshared or lone pair electrons. To do that, we'd say available minus shared, which would be 8 minus 6, which gives you 2. So we have 2 unshared. Now to get an idea for the shape, what you could do is look at the sheet again. But we know the atom that's going to be in the center is not going to be hydrogen. So basically, we're going to put phosphorus in the center. It's going to have three hydrogens attached to it. So one. 2, 
three hydrogens, and so that takes care of our three bonds. Now we have a lone pair that's going to go on a phosphorus. Now remember, every atom needs eight unless it's hydrogen. Hydrogen, each one of these, we have three hydrogens. Each hydrogen has two. Two, 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 because it has a line which represents a bonded pair. So each hydrogen has a duet. Now any atom besides hydrogen, unless it's a couple of exceptions, which, are, which would be beryllium and boron, needs eight. Now let's look and see it. Make sure phosphorus has eight. So it has two, four, six, and then two dots here, two lone pairs. So phosphorus has eight, and so we have a successful drawing. Here's a better representation of pH 3, phosphorus trihydrogen. Tri and then uh, here's what you should look at if you want to uh, look and find the shape. You look on your sheet. It has three bonding pairs, one lone pair. The actual shape of this would be in more of a pyramid. You'll see this when you try and make the molecule with the ball and stick models that we have. And the angle for this would be 109.5, and there should be a degree center on that. So that's it. We're going to jump into a lot of drawings on, on Monday. Good luck.